Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be dissecting Ball, his skill tree, units and tactics for you to get more wins as the demon. Ball is a fast demon that has an incredible diverse kit which can improve your chances of engagement with survivors. He's able to put immense pressure and even experienced teams might have a hard time against Ball. Not to say he's unbeatable, far from that. A team with Hunter Ash, with a legendary, Brock and any other Williams family members are a great counter to Ball because of Brock's damage reduction to all the family members. One of the biggest changes to his kit is that he's able to set up scare traps anywhere on the map, unlike any other demon. That will ensure survivors' fear levels will be constantly being pushed up and new marked mechanics triggered. Ball can be a difficult demon to master and you might have to change your playstyle a little when playing him. So here are my 41 tips on how to play Ball more efficiently if you want to have more wins. First, let's talk about the skill tree and then we'll go into gameplay mechanics. Spend points on Bullseye to increase ball speed after setting up traps to catch up and find survivors quickly. Finding survivors early is crucial to winning a match, but it doesn't mean you'll lose if you find them later. Being able to cross the map by constantly setting up traps to keep your speed is the best way to stay engaged with the survivors, especially after they've done points. Ball has the ability to mark enemies, similar to how Blight works with Plaguebringer. Marked survivors take more damage, have increased fear levels, and obviously are easy targets for possessions which can help drain survivors resources quicker, especially ammo from hunters. So make sure you put points on heart pounding to increase the damage they take and also on mark of evil to keep them marked for longer. With the current meta, having points on gates of hell for your units is crucial. You want to stay in the game as much as possible and there's nothing more frustrating than being on point and not being able to place any portals because everything is on cooldown. Those extra seconds cooldown reduction on portal placements can make a huge difference, especially on bookface. Now let's talk about his active ability Scarefest. This is one of my all-time favorite abilities in the demons as it saves so much time and it can be so useful to keep those traps on. It will ensure enemies are continually popping out, especially when survivors are quite set on staying at a certain place and that happens to be near a trap. That will ensure you have units in the ground all the time, survivors stay marked and high in fear. However, putting points on cooldown reduction on the skill tree is probably a waste and could be better served elsewhere on your tree. Do put points on this spear fest, however to keep Scarefest active for longer. Those extra 10 seconds will go a long way when you're doing points. Put points on Basics attack damage increase. In most cases, Basics are your go-to units when engaging with survivors. Don't put points on Basics health or balance bar. Once Fit of Temper is on cooldown and they're all on top of you, then you might as well depossess. Put points in Elite's health and balance bar. These Elites are the tankest of the lot when you activate Steel Epidermis. So it's important to have high balance bar health so that you don't get stunned. Don't waste points on Elite's attack damage. They are good enough as they are. I quite like to put points on Mortal Invader, so the survivors are more easily possessed and you can keep them in a possession loop, dropping them into a trap, repossess, drop on a trap, and so on. That means hunters have to be extra careful when going solo, and most who do go solo might find themselves 6 feet under in no time. You don't need to put points on boss extra damage as he does okay damage as it is. However, if you do put points here, on book phase you can down some survivors if they're all on top of you whilst you're attacking the Book. Obviously, Demonic Dash cooldown is a must, as this is another ability any demon has which you want to have when you most need it. Okay, that's about it for the tree. Everything else is kind of optional, but this is probably the most optimum build I found for myself. Now let's talk about best tactics with Ball. Save Scare Fast for when you're going into points, or when you find the survivors and want to lock down the area to keep them engaged and waste their time. Once traps go off, move around again to rearm them. Don't waste Scare Fast to chase survivors' cards. You might as well keep an eye out for traps that you can set up along the way. If you find survivors getting into cars, place traps on the sides of the cars so that when you possess the car and the survivors exit the car, they automatically trigger a trap and get marked. If you have demonic dash available, that's a good time to use it. Rinse and repeat. It's all about wasting the time and getting more XP to level up your in-game abilities. If they're already driving, you might have to time your trap placement with the car possession. You most likely will fail at first, but keep trying and eventually you'll master it. Ball is unique in its ability to set up scare traps anywhere. You can set up those behind survivors and then possess units in front of them. If they dodge backwards, they are likely to fall on them and get marked. 
Now let's talk about the basic units. When it comes to your units, the basics are your go-to units. The combo you want to do is four light attacks, followed up by Vampiric Rake, dodge, and then hit Fit of Temper and do another three light attacks. This can deal a whopper 800 damage and even more to a marked survivor. And it's probably going to get nerfed, so watch this space. Another tactic if they are all on top of you and you know you won't last long is to activate Fit of Temper straight away. If they're running away, save it until they're out of stamina and you've caught up with them. Their heavy attacks seem to hit for the same amount as the light attacks, but they have a bigger hitbox, so they'll land on multiple survivors if they are all on top of you. It's a slower attack, but it can be useful. Okay, elites, like we said, these are as tanky as they come if you activate the steel epidermis. Even with survivors on top of you, this elite can last quite a few seconds. However, a hunter with a legendary weapon might be able to dispatch it with a single headshot if you don't activate steel epidermis quick enough. Elite's heavy attacks can inflict 400 damage on one hit if survivors are marked. And it's got a big hitbox, so you can hit multiple survivors at once. Cascade of Blood chains great after landing light of heavy attacks, although it can be predictable. But if survivors are busy with other units, you might be able to hit some of them. Because they are slow, they are still easy to dodge, so best against warriors and maybe support. Avoid going against hunters and leaders as you'll never hit any of them. These are the units you want to use during book phase. Keep using your heavy attacks so that hopefully you can dispatch survivors or make them stop hitting you to heal. That should increase your elite's lifespan. You can also use Cascade of Blood during book phase, especially if survivors are low on health. That can hit survivors hard and like I said, make them stop to heal. Use elites in enclosed spaces. Because they have such a big hitbox, they can easily overwhelm survivors who are against the wall or in a corner. Time to talk about the boss. Some people are saying this is the weakest demon in the whole game, however Bo requires a slightly different playstyle. You have to be tactical about him and his abilities. He excels at sneak attacks, with Peekaboo dealing over 300 damage. Trick survivors for a free hit. He can be best used against isolated survivors, but also good when survivors are engaged with several units. Bo looks like a survivor so he can kind of blend in before you launch an attack or go invisible. His Blood Harvest ability can hit survivors for 680 damage. That's massive and it should be used at your first opportunity. Heavy attacks are slow but will hit multiple enemies at once. Use heavy attacks on book phase to damage survivors at the same time, just like the elites. He drops a healable once dead, even if you depossess. So if you don't want survivors to have that extra shamps after all the damage you inflicted, go invisible and hide before depossessing. Only use mass paranoia on your units, not on survivors. When using on units, survivors will be confused as to which unit is possessed, giving you a short window of time before they actually hit you. So time it well. Mass paranoia used against survivors makes all their portraits change to the one of the possessed survivor, but it's easy for them to know which survivor is possessed, so don't waste it. Okay, book phase. I always hate book phase and most people think Bo is bad at book phase. Whoever is saying that is probably playing it wrong. Of course, depending on the team composition and which legendaries they have, the odds might be against you. Use mostly elites heavy attacks and blood harvest to inflict survivors with damage as you attack. Obviously, use basics with fit of temper if no elites are available. And if boss is available, set up some scare traps and then spawn the boss. He does decent damage when landing heavy attacks and you might hit some survivors with that, which could lead to kills and facilitate the win. Set up scare traps whenever you already have units on the ground. What you don't want to do is set up scare traps during book phase and sit for a few seconds waiting for the survivor who's stationary to walk over it so you can finally have a unit on the ground. And that's about all the tips I have for you guys when playing ball. I hope you guys find this useful and please share your own tips with others down in the comments. I'm sure we will all love to read them. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.